Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you're not already subscribed, make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on post notifications so that you never miss a video. Before I get started on today's episode four, two, episode four of Regulatory Affairs Explained, I just want to take the opportunity to say, make sure you pre-order my book. It drops January 25th. I cannot wait for it to come out. If you want to learn how to be a savage, Okay, in your career, this book is definitely for you. It's not just for college students, it's literally for anybody. I talk about financial literacy, the history of college, the evolution of what our education is going to look like, how to negotiate salary, how to do well in an interview, so on and so forth. So make sure you guys pre-order this book, the link is in the description box. Today in episode four, we are gonna be covering ECTD and modules one, two, three, four, and five. ECTD just basically stands for Electronic Common Technical Document. Believe it or not, guys, before we stepped into this digital era, applications, the drug development process, it was not electronic. You wouldn't submit documents electronically to the FDA. You would submit them by paper. Yes, I'm talking like real just paper. I don't even know what that era is like. I've heard stories of people saying like, I remember when we had to sign cover letters with like a pen. Not to sound super millennial Gen Z, but I could not imagine dealing with all the regulatory documentation we have today in paper format. So I am so thankful and grateful for ECTD. A lot of the times when you're working with regulatory publishing or regulatory operations, we like to call it, they are the gurus of ECTD. They know how to build submissions in the backbone and they know how to make applications talk to each other for cross-referencing. They know everything. But it's important for you in regulatory affairs, whether you're a strategist, whether you're an associate, director, executive director, likely if you're an executive director, you already know everything about ECTD. But for those beginning in regulatory, it's really important for you to understand the components or the table of contents for ECTD. Of course, you can go on the FDA's website. You can just Google ECTD table of contents and their guidance will come up. But in this video, I'm just going to cover what each module is and what is likely to go in that document and also who in the drug development process is responsible. So let's get started. Module one. If you are in regulatory, you definitely are familiar with module one because you are responsible for it. Regulatory is generally responsible for drafting most documents that go in module one. You'll see stuff like the reviewer's guide, labeling, you will see meeting requests, correspondence, you will see information about like fast track designation, if your product has fast track status all within module one. So if you were submitting an annual report, which I mentioned in the last episode, make sure you go watch the last episode if you have not already seen it. Okay, I had to get close to the mic for that. Okay, so if you're submitting an annual report, that would go in module one. Now, regulatory generally doesn't write the annual report. That's one thing where you would get help from medical writing, but if you did have to contribute to like the status of regulatory information, you would provide medical writing with that information that goes in the annual report, or you could write it yourself. A lot of the times it's quite simple. You just speak to previous or current regulatory outstanding items that need to be listed in the annual report. But that would go in module one and regulatory would make sure it gets submitted every single year. Regulatory is responsible for that. And every application has like a birth date is what we call it. And from that birth date, I believe you have 60 days to submit that annual report to the agency. Um, cover letters, forms, those all go in module one. We talked about cover letters and forms in the last episode. If you wanna go more into detail of what goes into module one, I highly suggest you simply go on the FDA's website because there are so many documents that go inside there, but it's generally known as the section where all administrative information goes. Next, moving on to module two, you'll hear a lot of people call it the summary section. Within module two, you will see the quality overall summary or the QOS, Q-O-S. I hate when people use that acronym, but it's the quality overall summary. You'll see non-clin summaries and clinical summaries. And before I go into module three, four, and five, the way I want to explain ECTD or the way I want you guys to understand ECTD is it's kind of like a storybook, you know, exactly like a book. And the title of that book is whatever the name of your drug product is or whatever in the name of your product is, your drug, your biologic. And you wanna use the modules to tell a story to the FDA. You want them to understand the administrative information, which is chapter one, module one. You want them to kind of get a brief summary of what the rest of the chapters are gonna be like, which is module two. You're giving them a summary of your non-clinical, your animal studies. You're giving them a summary of your clinical, your human studies. You're giving
giving them a summary of your quality, which is module three. So chapter two, module two, is going to be an intro to why your drug should be approved or why you should begin using your uh, drug in humans. When you're filing for an IND, that's the beginning stage of your development uh, pathway. And I don't know if I really explained that, but when you're filing for an IND, it's where you haven't dosed in humans yet, but you want to dose in humans. So you are going to file for your IND to get approval from the FDA. And that's why sometimes I said in episode two or one, you want to have a pre IND meeting with the FDA to get their buy-in to make sure you get the approval so that you can start dosing in humans as soon as you get the approval. I hope that's making sense. But now moving on to chapter three or module three, what is the makeup of this drug? Like how do you manufacture it? What's the container closure system? What's the stability shelf life data? What is it about your product? How is it made? And how do we know that the way you're making it or manufacturing it is safe? Module three is all about CMC. What people will say, CMC, it just stands for chemistry, manufacturing, and controls. But that's chapter three of your story. You're telling the FDA how it's made and what your methods are and how you validated your methods to ensure that the way you're manufacturing your product is of quality. I will talk more about module three in the last episode of this series because I do think that module three needs a lot more attention and understanding the specific sections is a little bit more unique compared to the other sections. So module four, chapter four, is gonna be your non-clinical section and that's where all your non-clinical reports are gonna go. You're gonna get your PKPD, which stands for pharmacokinetics and pharmacodynamics. You're gonna get all those reports in there. You're gonna get your animal studies in there. Basically anything that is not in humans really is going in the non-clinical section. Now, module five, is the clinical section. And that is where I like to say, just to keep it simple, where your human study reports are going in. In another video, I talked about what an abbreviated clinical study report was and what a clinical study report is. That would go in module five. Your protocols for your phase one, phase two, phase three studies would go in module five. Your population PK reports, your exposure response reports, anything related to the population you're studying in humans is gonna go in module five. Now, that's the last chapter of the story that you're telling. And if we just go back to module one, chapter one, module one is the intro, the administrative information. Two is the summary. What are we going to get into? Three is how it's made. Four is like, okay, we are showing that it's safe and effective. We've done all, we've done all these animal studies. We're providing you with the PKPD information. And now we're moving away from animals and taking you to the last chapter and showing you how it's effective and safe in humans. So that's the way the story kind of flows. And I think when you think of it that way, it'll be a little bit easier for you to understand regulatory strategists as you interact with them. And a lot of times people will say that, like, what's our story? How are we explaining our data to the FDA in a way that they can understand it? You have to understand that people at the FDA, they aren't Albert Einstein's, you know? They're very smart people. But what I mean by that is they don't know everything. And even Albert Einstein didn't know everything. So that's probably a bad example to use. But the point is, when you're putting your applications together, you need to put them in a digestible way for the agency to understand. Do you have to think how many pharma companies are out there in this world and how many people are asking to have meetings with the FDA? Of course, there's different divisions and a bunch of people, but believe it or not, the FDA is extremely short staffed. And when you take into situation, take into account situations like COVID, where COVID has moved a lot of FDA resources to focus on this global pandemic, all these other drugs that are in development, you need to make your story as digestible as possible to save the FDA time in understanding your product and why and how it's effective. Obviously, data speaks louder than any story you can tell. And that's why it's the last chapter of the book because you're cementing it with proof from your studies. But I think it's you'll hear a lot about people talking about how we're telling our story, what's our story. And I, I wanted to use that story example for you guys for ECTD because I really do think it's helpful in understanding the regulatory side of drug development as it relates to what you're submitting to the FDA and why. The last thing I wanna to say to top this video off is the best way to understand ECTD is to go on the FDA's website and look at their guidances. And I think spending time maybe, you know, for the first quarter of 2022, you focus on module one and understanding what goes in module one. Maybe then the second quarter is module two. I don't know where everything goes in ECTD and I'm not gonna lie to you and tell you that I do because there are so many different sections 
I think somebody's on my roof and they're moving chairs and they're dragging them. Like I was saying, there are so many different sections. You know, module three has so many subsections. Module one has so many sub subsections. Module five has a million subsections. So I think that spending time to kind of look over those different components of the ECTD structure or the modules will really help you. I hope this video was helpful. Like I said, make sure you guys come back for the last episode of this series. We are gearing towards the last episode, which is going to be episode five. And I I will be talking all about CMC. So if you're a really technical person and you wanna learn more about CMC, make sure you hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss my next video. Until next time guys, bye.